Right, so uh, for this video I'm going to show you how you can easily, easily wire up your entire motorhome or caravans, 12 volt lights to these wonderful little babies. Uh, they're inexpensive, you can buy them from eBay. And what they basically are are 12 volt wireless switches. They don't cost very much and they're pretty easy to install. I find it very useful. I've got a few of them in the car. I've got one on my keychain together with my car key, my engine car key. I've got one on the dashboard. And I've also got another key that I bring with me if I'm going down. Let's say I'm staying in a caravan park. I'm going down for a shower. So I'll bring that with me. It could be in the middle of the night. I'll bring that with me. And um, with that, I'm able to turn on and off the lights as I leave. And um, if it's a very crowded place that I parked, it's happened to me once before, I'm able to turn on and off my external light with my remote switch from a really good distance, about uh, about 250 meters at least. Works beautifully. I think the technology is the same as what we use to unlock car doors uh, in ordinary cars anyway. So it's a tried and tr tested technology. It's super duper simple to, to wire up. Basically, you know, each, each, van, each van, each caravan, each motorhome is gonna have its own unique system. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's going to be a switch that leads to your ceiling light or whatever light we are talking about. Right, so what you want is when you turn it on here, the lights come on over there, on and off. That's what you want. So on, and from that point on, I can control it with this switch and turn it on and off. It doesn't matter whether I've left it off now. If I turn it off and then I turn it on again, it comes on again. This switch has been wired properly. It works as you would expect it to. It will come on when you switch it on, it will go off when you switch it off each and every time without any confusion. Now contrast this with this one here. Now this one I didn't wire up very well and I'll explain the difference to you in a minute. But the problem with this one is um, it'll, it seems to work intu intuitively when I switch it on, it goes on, turn it off, it goes off. But there can, can be some confusion. So if I use my wireless now to turn this off, right, so it's off now. Uh, it's still on here, you can, can see by the light, and I turn it off. So now it's off. So uh, let's say I come back again the next day and I want to turn it on and I flick the switch on and I expect the light to come on, but it doesn't come on. And that's because it hadn't been wired properly. Uh, and to do that, I need to override it by pressing the switch on again. So I'll explain to you what the correct wiring system is. If you follow those instructions, you won't get this problem. Okay, so these come in as a pair. You've got your controller inside this box and you get your wireless remote controller. It can come in something like this with four switches or more commonly, It'll come with two switches like this, an A and B switch. Um, so inside here is where the controller is. So this is what it looks like. You'll find a lot of these available for sale on eBay. And um, if you flip it over and you look closely, you'll see that these points here, these five points here are all labeled. So I hope that's coming up clearly but basically you've got your positive and negative you've got your common and you've got your nc so just remember you, you're just going to need your positive and negative and your common and your nc it's as simple as that now if you're going to do any wiring of course we'll start with basics and that is be sure to turn off all the power before you start your uh, project okay now let me draw out uh, an explanation as to how this should all be connected. I'll leave this here. Okay, so let's start off with where you are. You've got a battery, it's got a positive and a negative, and you've got a light. So that's your light. And for the light to run, it's also got a positive and a negative, right? So your negative will be connected to your negative negative of your battery, this B for battery, and this is your light. And for your power, you, you need another 
cable which runs to your light. The only difference is halfway there you're going to have a switch and that's your switch. So when this in this position the switch is in the off position, it's in the open position. So when the switch comes down, I'm going to draw it down like this, it becomes in the closed position, then electricity then runs through the circuit here from the battery to the light and the light comes on. So that's your switch that you have and that's your light and that's your battery. So how does this come in? Okay, so this is actually a switch. So these two bits represent that bit there. Okay, so what you want is the power from your battery to run into common, right? And then from the normally closed, that's what you want to run to your light switch. It's as simple as that. Now, the second point is um, you want power here. So you want a cable which runs from your positive of your battery to the positive here and negative to the negative here. Okay, now this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to start off with another sheet of paper to explain what it is that you're trying to do. Okay, let's, uh, let's start with this. So, what you want to do is from your hard switch, that's your hard switch, right, on your caravan, your motorhome, and this runs to your battery, right? What you want to do now is you want to run, after the switch here, you want to run this power you want to split. You want to have some of that power going to the positive of the controller and you want some of that power to go to the com, if that makes any sense. Your negative will go back to your battery, so negative will run to the battery, right? And from your normally close, that's what's going to run to your light. That's your light here. Okay, and of course the negative from the light goes back to the battery as well. I hope this makes sense. So what when you wind it up this way, what's going to happen is when you turn on the wall switch, the power will flow because it's normally closed. The electricity will flow right through here and go to your light and it'll work normally. So this switch will work normally. And in addition to that, because you've got your wireless control, you'll be able to turn this switch on and off by pressing the switch on your on your remote control, if that makes any sense. Okay, so that's your wireless switch here. So by pressing, each time you press this switch, this is gonna go on and off, and that's how you're controlling the light. So I hope that makes sense to you. So you basically need to open up your uh, panel. You gotta find out where your switch is, and you gotta find out where this cable runs from, and this is your most important cable. This, this red cable, your positive cable, you wanna to run to the positive of the power supply of the controller and to the com of the switch part of the controller. And from the normally con closed, that will run onto your light. So if I were to draw another diagram, When you open up your panel, what you're going to see is you're going to you're going to find this is going all the way to your light. Okay, this is your switch here. That's your light. This is running to your battery. It's going to your positive. So what you want to do is snip the cable here. You're going to cut the cable here, and you're going to run. You're going to have you're going to end up with two ends of the cable, right? So you're going to end up with this part and this part. So this part of the cable will run to COM as well as to positive. So you could run it to the positive and then run a short cable to the COM. And this part here, which runs to your light, will get connected to this. And if you're wondering, okay, where, where does that go to? You're gonna to have to find a negative. Now in most caravans, cars, and motorhomes, the negative could be wired directly to the chassis 
to, in, to any metal structure of the car and that will eventually run all, run all its way back to the negative of your battery. Or look for a, a negative um, cable inside your box and just connect it to the negative there. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, so let's assume you've done all your wiring. Next thing you're going to need to do is program your remote. To do that, you'll need to first identify that little tiny button on the device, which you see here. So the programming can begin with you first starting fresh by pressing the button eight times. What this does, it removes the memory of any previous programming you've done before. So it's an optional thing. If you'd like to do it, you can do this. You don't really have to. Um, the programming, the programming itself is really, really simple. All you do is press that button twice, followed by the button on your remote. Let's say you've got three remotes, you repeat the process. So press the button on the controller twice, followed by the button on your remote. Keep doing that and you'll have all of them programmed. Well, there you have it. I hope that's been useful for you. Uh, I think it is a fantastically useful thing. So do give it a thumbs up and a like and share it with your friends who might find it useful. Thanks.